Well, good morning. Welcome back to the broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRNAM for Friday, March 25th, 2022. And our top story today, balancing caregiving with your profession and your family. Well, joining me now to discuss this and a lot more is Ray McGrath. Ray, thanks so much for joining us again on the program this morning. Thanks, Jeff. It's a pleasure to be back. Uh, I know we've spoken about this before. It, it's for me. It's uh, it, it continues, you know. So I guess, uh, and I, I I I take it one day at a time, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And and our topic today, as I said at the outset of the show, is balancing your career because uh, you've got a very fruitful career with caregiving, and that's not an easy thing, Ray. And just to you know, you've been on the program numerous times, shared stories about your mom. First, let's start with. How is your mother doing? And um, I know she was in hospice care and and receiving, uh, I think, 24-hour support. Right. She's doing in-home hospice. Um, You know, hospice typically means uh, that they've given you six months to live. She's just now, thankfully, eclipsed the six-month window. So now she's into her second six-month window. And, you know, I, I think for my mom, Well, I I think for the family, it's a good thing because she's still with us. Um, For her personally, you know, I don't know. She feels this this has been going on for a while. But Mm -hmm. I know as I observe my mom, maybe this is too much information, but she's actually feeling a little bit better because she's doing at-home hospice. So we're trying to make her as comfortable as possible. And it seems as if, you know, it's been beneficial for her doing at-home hospice. I mean, that's great. And she gets to see her grandchildren. She gets to see you, her family. Um, it sounds like her spirits have been lifted and it shows you how much care is and how much health is in your brain. I mean, there's some things you just can't control, you know, if, if the, the heart is not right or other parts of your body are not right. But if you have a positive mindset, you can really extend your life and, and have a much more positive life. Right. I mean, she's on her own schedule being at home. When she was in uh, assisted living, they, they were almost doing daily COVID tests, and she was tired of having to go through that ordeal on a daily basis. And, you know, the nurses were on their schedule. Here at home, she's on her schedule. She sleeps till she wants, you know, lights off when she wants, and I think that works for her. Yeah, well, that that's great, and I think a lot of people can can learn from your circumstances. We talked about how you were able to, once the diagnosis was made, and this were going back months, you were able to find in-home help. It was not an easy process. But let's talk today about balancing uh, your job, your career. You work in the financial services industry, uh, but you're also attending to your mother. What are some of the challenges in terms of balancing? And also, I should add, you're a parent. You've got grown children, uh, college age and and above, and you're married. So let's talk about how you balance all of those things, uh, but still take care of mom. Yeah. It's not easy, I'll tell you, especially because, you know, my mom requires 24-7 care. Um, She's not the most demanding, but still, um, there are times when her caregiver needs time off, so I spend my time with her. So I'll spend, you know, three or four days a month living with her, taking care of her. And uh, I am sort of fortunate that I'm in the financial services industry. You know, if I was in construction, I'd have to be on the job site. So uh, for a lot of our clients... In my industry, we're still working remotely or, or we're, we're doing a lot of Zoom or Teams calls and things like that. So w- all I really had to do was get high speed Internet at my mom's residence and bring my laptop and I'm able to work from there. So th- the only time for me it's a bit of a, a problem is when it's just myself and my mom and I'm, I'm doing a call with a client or what have you. And uh, my mom's calling me at the same time. So that, that's a little bit... <laughs> You know, a little could be a little bit stressful, or someone's ringing the doorbell, or what have you, things like that. But um, yeah, fortunately, it, well, I, it, it's worked out. Go you ahead. Know? But uh, yeah, you've been you've been very fortunate, and it didn't start out that way. I think when we were talking again, trying to find help. Uh, you know, your mother does not live in your town; she lives 
what, 30, 40 minutes away. Exactly. So you have to you have to drive 30 or 40 minutes. And even if you're a few miles apart in the New York area, uh, that, can that can take a long time to go. So you are having to go back and forth. You're having to go back and forth. And, and, and you mentioned the flexibility, uh, the flexibility of the workplace. And certainly there are certain vocations that are not flexible, but you happen to work for an employer that recognizes the importance of family and, and this balancing act. And I, you know, I, I think of not only caregiving, but also during the, 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 the pandemic, taking care of smaller children, getting them off to quote unquote school, which was virtual. So right. you, ha you happen to work for an employer that really partners with you. Right, and, and it is difficult for, I think some folks, I, you know, I can convey a story. I have a friend who their employer actually let them leave work for six months with, with full pay. I don't know if that's an op, that wasn't an option for me. I mean, I'm still, I don't know if during the labor shortage or what, for whatever reason, I still kind of have to work, but I'm able to do my work. So I'm, I'm able, I actually find myself, uh, you know, when I'm, I, I'll use the term sequestered, living with my mom, I have a lot more time, a lot less distractions, so a lot more time to focus on my work. So in some ways it's a positive for my employer. Um, the only time, like I said, if there's a distraction during a client meeting, but aside from that, um, you know, we are making the best of it. Um, you know, who knows how it'll all work out in the end if my mom becomes too much of a burden to uh, take care of. But right now, you know, we're, we're, as I said in the beginning, we're, we're taking it day by day and it really does, uh, that's, that's the only way you can handle these situations. Just trying to make, make my mom as comfortable as possible. Yeah, it's a really good, really good mindset. Ray, I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more with Ray about balancing career, family life, and caregiving. It's a really important conversation. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers. This free book reveals little known secrets about annuity strategies that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. Call right now for your free book. And as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free for calling Annuity General today. Call 800-504-8194. Welcome back. We're talking this morning to Ray McGrath. We're talking about balancing caregiving with your family and also your career. Ray, thanks so much for staying with us this morning. Thanks for being uh, for allowing me to be on your show, Jeff. Uh, well, it's great. I think, and I, I think we really appreciate you sharing a look into your world. I think there are a lot of people out there that are going to, that are going through this. You know, caregiving is something that is underappreciated, but we all will be caregivers uh, in some capacity. Uh, caregiving to children, caregiving to adults, uh, you know, our parents, um, 
or, or our spouse, right? I mean, so this is this is really topical. This is important. You know what, um, Jeff, I will say that you, you never think about it, but when I talk to my peers, they have parents in similar situations and caregiving is front and center for a lot of, uh, you know, boomers, so to speak, you know, so you yeah, know, we're doing it. Yeah, you, we all are. We all are. We're all going to be there. So if you're a young person today, you're watching the program, you could at some point be taking care of your parents. Ray, there really isn't a lack of appreciation, I, I would say, just from my perspective, of caregivers, people like yourself who jump in and help. And, and I know both at the federal, the, first of all, there's a lack of caregivers in general. A lot of them resigned during the pandemic. Before that, the wages were not extremely high. It really is a more of a labor of passion than a labor of high finance or making a lot of money. Uh, but there are uh, move, there's movements afoot to offer at the state level to offer tax credits and also to find resources at the federal level. Your thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, the the hospice folks that I was dealing with or I'm dealing with, they told me there are some options where I'm in the state of New Jersey where there could provide some income replacement if I was to leave my my employer. But for me, that that wasn't an option because it, it doesn't really cover my expenses. And I would still I'm the primary caregiver. I, I pay for health care for my family. And, you know, we just couldn't make ends meet if I was to use one of these um, state subsidized programs. Um, you know, that being said, uh, it, it's it's definitely not free. It, as you said, it's hard to find people. I found a fair amount of people who could, you know, give me 40 hours a week, Monday to Friday, nine to five, so to speak. But, you know, unfortunately, the nature, especially if, if the person's not living with you, you, you know, your older parent, you, you need someone, you know, 24 seven for the most part. And, th and that's that is difficult to find, you know, even since pre pandemic, it's, it's been difficult to find. I know your mother, Ray, is very independent. She likes be being on her own. You mentioned how she, it's her 24 hours to use. Any thoughts about having, have you had any thoughts about her moving in with you and, and your family? Cuts down on the 30 to 40 minute commute back and forth. Also could really help with the caregiving. But again, it's that balance. It puts a lot of stress on your family. And I think you have some children still living with you at home along with your wife. And I think you have some pets as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a t tough one because there was an incident with my mom about 10 years ago when she hurt, hurt herself and I had her move in with me. And uh, at that point, she came, she stayed for two nights and said, I'd rather be living on my own. So I think, um, you know, between my, members of my family who weren't overly keen about her taking up half the house, so to speak, um, and then my mom also not wanting to be here. Maybe she felt it, but um, yeah, she wanted to be in her own environment. She likes to talk to her own neighbors, you know, whatever she, her normal routine, she still continues to do that. And I think that's what she's comfortable with, you know? So. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I mean, I think these are all part of those conversations you have to have with a loved one, even before uh, that maybe this kind of sets in, right? I, and Ray, I mean, looking back on things, um, did you have these types of conversations with your mom about, okay, what happens? Um, you know, you're, you're 70 years old now. What happens when you're 80? Uh, you, what do we do about finances? I mean, these are, these are intricate conversations. These are, these are danger areas, right? The politics, the religion, finances. These are things that are hard to talk about in a family. Oh, we've definitely had, we've had more of those conversations now where she's saying maybe she should have restructured her estate differently years ago, because now uh, we're subject to a five-year look back on any dispersion of assets. And um, that, that that's a bit of an issue for us as a family, um, because I'm not the only um, son. I have a brother. So, you know, there's concerns there. Um, I, I think for my mom, yeah, in retrospect, I think we, we could have done a different job of planning. I think at the time she thought she was doing something fair and equitable. But um, in terms of being a, a, eligible for Medicaid, there's a five-year look back. I've had agencies reach out to me to want to help me apply for assistance, but that agency might want seven thousand dollars to fill out a form. So I'm not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not willing to do that at this point. But 
you're right. I think I, I, I recently, I know on your show, you had some, an expert on talking about uh, long-term care insurance and the benefits of that. Yes, it's, it's expensive. Sorry, my dog's in the background. That's, That's okay. We love we love pets on this show. I know. Pete we appreciate that. But um, yeah, <laughs> long-term care is expensive. You know, you never know what's going to happen. And it's, uh, I think a lot of people, it's easy to procrastinate. But, um, you know, right now, I, I, it, it is, I'm spent. So, uh, you know, I'm in the retirement space. I know about saving for retirement, but I'm actually deferring some of my retirement savings to pay for my mom's care right now. And I know that's not typically how we should do things, but, you know, when push comes to shove, you have to find a way to fund some of the care. So you have to do whatever it takes. I think people, there are a lot of people in your situation uh, for different reasons, and it's not a straight level trajectory. Ray, last question. I've got about a minute left. Uh, Has this changed how you think about your, uh, you're a young man still, but how you plan and what it means for your children when you and your wife get to that point uh, in age where you may need some assistance? Well, it's it's given me pause or time to think about it, but I really haven't made a decision. I think once again, I'm, I'm taking the easy way out. Let's see what happens. But uh, I, I don't know. My, my children are still living with me. Um, so really, it, it is it is something I think about, but uh, I, I, something I have to discuss with my wife on how we'd like to, to plan things. She comes from a family where everyone takes care of each other. My family's a little bit more independent. So it, yeah, it remains to be seen. So that, that, that's to be answered going forward, that question for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. We really appreciate you coming on the program and, and thanks for letting us uh, hear a little bit about your private life and how you're balancing that with your profession. Ray McGrath, always great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great weekend and we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Thank you so much, Jeff, for having me. That wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news in wellness, finance, lifestyle, tech, so much more, all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to see our latest content? Search our archives. We'll check out our website and, of course, our streaming partners like Amazon, Roku, Samsung. Over a 100 more places you can find BRN on demand and streaming. Don't forget, we're back again tomorrow for BRN Weekly. We'll have a look at some of our best segments for the week. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. The Tax Doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a Tax Doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. Call 800-224-6439.